Yes, I'm going to talk to you in the last, uh, in the last of these short sessions about the work of the academic groups, uh, the work stream, which I've been chairing. And so the purpose of the academic groups work stream is set out here. So really this is a way of trying to act as a conduit, joining together research groups active in health research, health and care research, across partnership organisations, and link that back into the executive and, and the board. Ensure the executive is aware of research development challenges and opportunities to guide the decisions it makes and support the work of the partnership by, for example, undertaking gap analyses, developing proposals for development. Um, the key function of, of, of the group is to develop collaborations between groups and partner organisations. And one thing we haven't talked about much actually so far is external partnerships and particularly with third sector and commercial uh, organisations. The membership uh, is, is cross-partnership, as, as I've mentioned, so it, it, it's, it's fallen to me to, to chair it with my different hats on. We've got input from uh, University of Sussex, uh, University of Brighton, uh, University, Hos University Hospital Sussex, uh, and uh, several different parts of BSMS, uh, and uh, you can see the particular people there. But the big thing we've done so far, I mean, it probably dwarfs even what, what you were saying, Nikki, about discussing what's an early career researcher. We've been talking about what is health and care research. Uh, and once you start getting into that, it becomes quite woolly around the edges. Um, but NIHR defines health and care research, as you, can, as you can see here. And we probably should nail our colours to that mast, actually, because they're the main funding sector we're going to be operating in. And they say that health and care research is research which seeks to answer questions about the best options available and then uses these discoveries to make decisions about improvements or changes. Diagnosis of disease, life-changing treatments, prevention, improve health and care for generations to come and ensure everyone has a better quality of life. So when we start to talk about the relevance of the research underway across different partners uh, to, this, to this definition, clearly in the NHS, it's pretty relevant. Uh, I think there's not, hopefully not a lot of research going on inside NHS organisations that are not relevant to health and care. Um, but there was quite a lot of discussion uh, about where the boundaries lie within the partner universities. So, for example, within the medical school, there is quite a rich uh, environment of, of laboratory sciences in the, in the MRB. Within Sussex, of course, there is life sciences. And once we started to talk about that uh, and explore with the different partners from the universities particularly, um, we started to think about what is relevant and potentially relevant in those schools to this research definition. And for me, this comes back to a point that I've been trying to make in my, 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 my introductory uh, a, a talk, really, about how you generate something which is unique. And a lot of the unique contribution opportunities we have come from the unique strengths of our partner universities. So I, I, I say I've worked in, in antimicrobial resistance for years, and uh, most of my productive research partnerships have been external to this area, actually. I've worked quite extensively in Oxford, but the strongest research partnership I've had is with science policy here at the University of Sussex, something I would never thought of being something which would necessarily be relevant to my daily life prescribing antibiotics to patients. And so I think starting to think creatively about the academic activity at the, which, at the parent universities can allow us to th start to think richly around what we consider to be in, out, and how we make sure we have this porous edge to what we define as, as relevant activity. So the work today is mostly on building that profile of the academic groups, beginning to discuss areas where there may be synergies, challenges and, and, and gaps, and thinking about how we communicate from the partnership to people doing health and care research, both people who think, yeah, I'm doing health and care research, but also people who maybe don't think they're doing that at the moment, but we want to be part of the, of the discussions. And so we've been developing routes of communication. You've seen, uh, we've seen the newsletters we've produced. We're starting to think about how we get those out into the organisations, how we get people not to just press delete, but actually read them and see them as being relevant to what they're doing. And one of the really interesting discussions was that the input in the development stage to um, the HRP from Sussex was very much around the School of Psychology, where there was clearly strong links with Sussex Partnership Foundation Trust, very strong clinical research related to, to, to mental health. These are slides I should acknowledge Cathy Greenwood has, has put together from, from psychology. 
But so she's done some work beginning to flesh out all the different dimensions for research which is taking place in the School of Psychology and the different ways they might map onto the clinical activity in Sussex Partnership. And clearly there's a lot of rich and, and, and ongoing uh, joint working there already. But then we start to look at what's taking place in life sciences. And so we've got areas, I mean, if people who work in Sussex can see all these, they're just taken from the website. So genome damage and stability, computational uh, neuroscience, robotics, which includes an infectious diseases modeling group, for example, very relevant to what, to what I do. Sussex neuroscience, uh, neuroscience and computation, and the Drug Discovery Center. And then several groups that already exist at a basic science level, hematology, for example, dementia, which cross between schools in the University of Sussex and the medical school, which of course is partly a school of the University of Sussex. And so this starts to then take us thinking, thinking further about the work which is taking place, and I've mentioned science policy, but once you start to think about what takes place quite widely in the University of Sussex across these different schools, you start to think potentially creatively about the way in which we can produce a profile for research that may be relevant to health and care, building on these, uh, on these, these areas. Um, similarly, uh, um, Mark Yeomans uh, provided this, this slide, which just tries to start to bring together the rich diversity of research taking place at the University of Brighton, which may be relevant to health and care research. And I think at this very early stage when the partnership is forming, we should be really taking a careful look at how all these different strengths can contribute to the development of the research we're trying to, to produce across the partnership. And while we have this NIHR definition in our minds, not be so wedded to it, we lose the opportunity to develop some of these strengths and weave, weave them into the development work that we can do. So this is, this is the subject of a, of a large document we're trying to put together to inform the board, and we're going to present a first draft of it to the board this afternoon, which just sets out really descriptively the richness of research that's taking place across the partnership will allow us, we hope, next year to start weaving that into the strategy development. And so you can see I further embellished my, my Blue Peter diagram here, just starting to put the blocks of, of particular research activity in there that's taking place across the different uh, partners. So you can start to see where there are synergies and where there are similar things going on. And we can start fleshing out where there are already uh, active research partnerships, where there are opportunities to start bringing people together to develop their research further. So, as I say, we've been really working on preparing a, 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 a report for the board on the scope of, of, of research across the partnership, really taking this, uh, this, this very wide lens on what that could, uh, could be. And we want to combine this work with the findings of the survey that I mentioned to inform the strategy development we're going to be, work we're going to be doing over the first six months and really take that forward into some, some engagement activity across the universities and the NHS, the NHS partners. So we're planning a programme of engagement activities over the next year, really to try and establish what the challenges and opportunities are for research development, identify gaps, identify strategies where we can improve multidisciplinary and cross-theme collaborations uh, between partners. We've not yet started really to think about commercial engagement, but we're going to have to do a piece of work around that over the next year and work with the executive to start developing some business places to strengthen uh, collaboration. And I'll leave that there. Uh, take any questions in there.